I, I will talk about the continual road to an inclusive definition and use of terms for the US research software engineer community. Um, I'm from Notre Dame and I'm on the steering committee. So I think Lance and Charles are also on the call, I've seen two of the co-authors. And yeah. So I know a lot of the research software engineer or engineering associations go for the word um, engineering instead of engineer. And we discussed it at the beginning in the US also, what we would like to do and like the other organizations we thought about, it's a community driven organization. So should we emphasize the people and the community or the discipline? If we emphasize the discipline, maybe we get more people who are also outside but are interested in engineering. But emphasizing the community and people seemed for us a little bit more straightforward. So, but also are people, so these are the questions we had and we are not sure whether we solved it by using now engineer instead of engineering. And we are happy to hear opinions about it. So are we inclusive for people interested in the community, but not as each themselves as they hear research software engineer association? And we want to be inclusive, of course, for universities, laboratories, knowledge institutes, um, companies, yeah, other enterprises, um, which are using research or uh, needing research software engineers. So do they see it the same way or would they be more attracted by engineering? And maybe discuss, I think discussing terms and how to express something is very important, but maybe we have already overthought it there. So we are very open to discussions whether it would make a difference for you, whether it's an engineer association or engineering association. And if we look at yeah, diversity, equity, and inclusion, so the uh, keynotes, the source keynotes, as at the kickoff of, of the source events by Kerry Jordan and Marianne Hardy had really fantastic topics about it. And I really also like this diversity is being invited to the party, inclusion is being asked to dance. And Kerry Jordan even sang the song, so I'm not so good in singing, I won't do that, but, but I like this picture. It's like if terms we are using attract people or make it open to people, um, the community open, then, then they feel at least being invited, I would say. Inclusion is then the next step. And um, if you have seen diversity or equity and inclusion talks, you might have seen this graphics already. It's really the reality how it is shown in the graphics is maybe a little bit overdone, maybe not. Maybe in some situations it's really like that. Equality definitely, I think, is sometimes still like that. Everyone treated the equal way doesn't bring everyone in the same situation. So equity is something we want to achieve. And it's called liberation, but it's also really inclusion. And we want to be in the game and not only the audience of a game. So Neil Truhang gave also in, an interesting talk at the second international RSE leaders workshop and some of you might have, have seen the talk and he looked at that RSEs, um, the, yeah, the diversity is even less than in STEM and that is surprising because as, as Chris said at the beginning, he does not know people in, in the RSE community who are not nice which is great. I love that statement. <laughs> so I have the same impression, but still our inclusion diversity doesn't show that really. So that, that is interesting. Sherry Penke gave a keynote at Perk 20. I also really uh, loved that keynote. And she was, she came from the perspective that, that yeah, the people who are a minority, like she being in, in STEM as a woman, also, I have to put more effort into it um, to, to change the culture. And I agree to that probably really minorities have are often in the situation that they have to put more effort, but we want to get away from that. So how can we change the culture? And also baby steps are contributing to that. So we thought about 
as a US Southeast Steering Committee, so I'm part of it, and we are nine, nine um, people on the steering committee. We are not experts on the topic. So it's not like that I've done a lot of research in that area. I am reading, yes, but we are aware of a lack of knowledge. But we are open to suggestions how to increase um, yeah, diversity, equality for ideas. That we are thinking about biases. Also, we have, and some are just really subconscious, and I will come back to that later. And there's research, of course, available on diversity, equity, and inclusion, and information and good practices. I will present a couple of them. And um, we have a policies for documents and information on our website. There's always a phase for review by the community. Um, so, first of all, yeah, the steering committee looks at, at documents, but there's the chance for the community before it's really going out there. And there's always a chance, of course, to comment and say if we have overlooked something. So we are very open there. Our website is in GitHub. You can, you know, write a pull request and um, help us with making it really inclusive and, um, yeah, address this topic. So our current definition, for example, for us is, and we mention the word inclusive in a way that, it's, that we want to attract as many people as possible who see themselves as the role of research software engineers, who might be only interested um, to work with research software engineers and only in really this meaning only, um, who spent a lot of time um, on programming, maybe researchers who are in between or who need software to, to really solve their research problems. So that is, we, we really want to support this community and yeah, to create more robust, manageable and sustainable research software. So another, we have a code of conduct so that was also very important for us that it's a welcoming environment. And like Chris at the beginning said, there's a code of contact for the source events. We, we have it also for research software engineers for the, all our events, for the whole community, for everything. Um, yeah, we are organizing and also welcoming the community. And, and our mission statement also points to this inclusive definition of research software engineers. But that is the only point where we really say, oh, we are inclusive. So we are open to everyone, but we are not doing really active steps. So we want, these are the three main topics of our mission statement. So we want to create a professional community to share knowledge, connections, and resources. We advocate for the valuable role of research software engineers and we want to provide resources for the community. And we had this community call on, on this topic um, and how USRC could fit in a role to support this. And as I already said, so at the moment, what we have on our website is advocating that we are open but there are no active steps to really further support it. So potential activities we discussed in this community call this month, it was at the beginning of the month, was that we want to add a page to our website with resources for members. That we, for example, um, all some yeah, hiring managers who are part of the community are more aware of that they're inclusive in the hiring process and that we really also reach out on campus groups uh, with student participation, for example, and talk about the RSE profession so that the, the community can grow. Um, one positive example is, for example, the RSE Stories podcast. So maybe most of you, a lot of you have heard about it. The podcast is, is um, yeah, synergetic action between UK and the US, but it's internationally um, 
that everyone who's interested can be interviewed about his, her role in research software engineering. And um, it's, it's a monthly podcast. And there's really diversity already in, in the people who, who have been interviewed and that shows the diversity that is possible in the community. And we created a new Slack channel so everyone who's interested to join this discussion. Um, the goal is really to create a working group. And we have a blog post about the community call on, on this topic you can find here. So I will share the slides also after the talk that you can find all the URLs. So if you look, for example, at terms and wording, and I found this at, uh, yeah, at a bank for a hiring process. And of course, that's a little bit further away from, from um, academia or from software engineering in between. But what I liked about it, that it's really, it, it's not dependent on on let's say the profession you are hiring for because this is really showing that that it's um, yeah important in all the different areas of hiring for different professions and for example um so avoiding words that may convey stereotypes and I would have never thought about for using work words like competing or dominant for for a job um, description, but more motivated and tireless, but that it's mentioned here, that is the second point, um, that shows that people have found job descriptions like that. And um, yeah, to, to show also, to avoid unclear and unnecessary requirements, that is very helpful for, for job descriptions and to be really open to commitment to diversity and inclusion, that is topic five. I, I like the idea of using you and us, that it's more a personal thing. Um, and that is the candidates, I can see that candidates react better on, on this personal of using these words. Avoiding using masculine nouns and pronouns is definitely something that is proven that more women um, apply if, if you avoid this. There's research about it. And yeah, being concise is the eighth point or states the company's purpose and values. I, I think that is something like really stating mission, vision also in academia is something good. And hiring better starts by writing better. What they found out is was if you use inclusive language, it gets filled 70% faster and attract 23% female candidates. 23% more female candidates is really a huge difference. So if you look at this um, career karma, I really like how they present their material. So it's obviously um, a black woman um, and all their graphics are showing black women if they only show one person. And that is great. Instead of having the stereotype of software engineers, the white males, maybe more mixture all over the place would, would be also good. But I think this shows already that they thought about to, to make it really inclusive. And instead of showing the, let's say white male who's to 70%, um, in the software engineer world, um, showing a black woman is, is a great step in the in direction of inclusive, being inclusive. So there's also at universities different aspects. For example, this is about reference writing. So avoiding gender bias and reference writing. And I found it interesting when I had seen this fly the first time. So I. I found it last year and it's interesting. I'm a woman and I realized that I do somehow really the mistakes that not on purpose, it's unconscious. And I'm even aware of <laughs> trying to, to support. I'm aware of the problem and I try really to support that it's not gender biased, but for example, to mention 
you can find things like here that letters of reference for men are four times more likely to mention publications and twice as likely likely to have multiple references to research. That is a high number also. So always mentioning publications, always mentioning, you know, the research, the accomplishments, and trying to stay away from stereotypes. Like, I would never write about a male student that he's caring or compassionate. I also don't do that about female students, but I probably have seen this already when I got references from students who, who got from another person when I got a reference um, from, from a colleague, that there was a word like that in there, like compassionate. So, or that they mentioned the personal life, oh, she, she was um, very efficient, even though she, she gave birth or something. It was not exactly the sound, but really you mentioned that the student has a child now and was even so efficient. The colleague probably meant it well, but you wouldn't mention that about a man. So why mention it about a female student? And yeah, it's really important to emphasize accomplishments, not the effort. And we all have a little bit of bias. So yeah, this flyer is really helpful. I have it printed out for me that, that I avoid the adjectives with, which are there and adjectives that I have some to include for references. Something similar has been done also by the Earth Observatory, the Lemon Doherty Earth Observatory. What I like here is they have additionally um, mentioned some, so not mentioning, for example, try, yeah, with women, oh, they're, they're team players. Everyone expects women to be team players, to be honest. Um, so not extra managing then, but more problem solving skills, creativity, and ac mention accomplishments again. And um, so John or Jennifer, if you look at this box, uh, there are numerous studies about this different thing. And it's really about CVs, recommendation letters and evaluations um, that often really men are, yeah, more favorably evaluated than, than women. And that is just a bias, with, which is a kind of there in, in STEM and being aware of it what is very good for us to, to avoid it. And as I said, as a woman, I, I have recognized about my writing style something um, for, for reference letters that I'm very careful now, uh, yeah, and to support other women and also minorities in general in STEM. So another um, interesting um, yeah, information for inclusion on diversity and equality is the Discover Cookbook from Nam Focus. And um, so they have listed a couple of actions you can do, for example, if you have an event. And it uh, shows a couple of actions more for face-to-face for -face events again, so after COVID, <laughs> these actions can be done maybe again, but it's also for the online world and they structured um, different actions in high impact and low effort. That is really something we all want, you know, the low hanging fruits, which is great. Uh, the high impact and high effort is also something that, that is, of course, um, we can reach a lot of, but yeah, low impact and low effort might be worth it, but yeah, if it has low impact, maybe not. But low impact and high effort is definitely nothing we would like to go because we cannot do everything in, in this cookbook. They have many suggestions and they focus really on, on topics which have high impact. So for example, if you organize something that, that the organizing committee itself should reflect diversity, so then it, that already starts there. And I, I think a lot of events are already good at that and trying to 
include more women, trying to include more people with different background or really students of color, for example. And that is kind of higher effort to, to reach out beyond your normal community. But you can also, for example, for the registration um, of, of the conference, you can already show it directly that you think about diversity, inclusion, and have a code of conduct. And just having a tick box at the registration that confirms that a participant has read the code of conduct shows that you take that seriously. Or mention the code of conduct to apply to the speakers in the speaker guidelines. And that it's easily accessible on the conference website. So Chris did it at the beginning showing where the code of conduct is for the source events. The US RSE has the code of conduct on the, on the website. And another thing is so to reach out to networks who are supporting diversity already is a good step. Um, so there's the Alice Network or the Women in HBC, National Society of Bl Black Engineers. Um, these are examples for really reaching out and trying you know, maybe to find people who are interested in research software engineering there from our community. So the next step for us is really that we would like to have a working group on, on this topic. So we created the Slack channel. We are collecting material. So everyone who has material that is interesting for us, we would be happy to um, receive it and to reach out to network supporting this topic already. And one really yeah, important method is what we have seen. It's really, it needs continuous actions. It is not done by one activity or one set of activities. And we are happy about any suggestions for us to improve this, or maybe there could be an international working group on this topic between all the RSE associations. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for that, Sandra. I think that um, that talk you mentioned by, by Neil uh, Chuhong in particular was a wake up call for me that maybe in the UK we've been a bit complacent uh, about some of this stuff and uh, a bit assuming we do better than, better than average when, uh, when it seems we don't. So I think it's really great that the US society is taking a lead on this. And uh, yeah, indeed, I hope this is followed up with international activities. Um, I'd like to open it up to some questions now. Um, I think, yeah, if you have a question either for Steve or for Sandra, then uh, please feel free to um, stick something in the chat or unmute your microphone and uh, go ahead and ask. I stopped sharing that I see some faces. <laughs> Chris, we don't hear you. You are muted. <laughs> Sorry. You've got to do it at least once per thing. Um, so there's a question there for Steve. It says, uh, I enjoyed your talk. Thanks. Uh, have you considered a dry baseline text rather than MLK? Perhaps a medical textbook, many false positives, question uh, mark. Probably not with regex, high precision, low recall, but spacey might get a bit squiffy. Uh, so I, uh, I have thought of that um, and it's probably coming to the next stage and that's particularly good for so textbooks of those dry subjects are quite good for hypermany detection. So you might say, so hypermany is, uh, so a knife, a knife and fork are um, high, Pernims or the hyponym cutlery. So you have a lot of these kind of very descriptive texts that would be very good for actually developing a data set to test the um, hypermany relations. So that would that would be particularly useful. Uh, and yeah, I think I think as controlled data as MLK, that's that'd be a, a perfectly valid approach because they're com they're completely non-violent. Um, at all, so yeah, I think that would be that would be a good idea. So, in terms of regex and spacey, so the original um, 
hypermany detection component was developed from regex um, uh, from regex uh, rules, uh, which I then adapted into spacey matcher rules. And then in the new version that's coming out soon, um, there's a new dependency uh, matcher, which then actually looks rather than the instance of the words, it looks for the instance of the dependency relations, which I think will imp dramatically improve the precision and recall of the um, hypermy relations. Thank you for the question. Thanks for that. Anybody else? So maybe I can ask the audience <laughs> uh, who would be interested to be part of a working group regarding diversity, equality, inclusion. We don't know at the moment in which direction it, it goes, but that is part of the working group to define goals, what, what are really um, next steps we, we could do to improve the situation. Um, okay. So it's certainly something I'd be interested in. Um, Great. <laughs> <laughs> um, Both good. We international committees always run into these issues around time zones, but uh, yeah, that is true. That is. Figure something out. I'm sure we can figure something out. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. I think it's really, really great. Like you say, I think there's a lot of. We should all point where a lot of the the low hanging fruit in terms of like passive stuff, like code of contacts, just having a thing that you set up and then you leave has has been sort of done and achieved in a lot of in a lot of places, but. Um, it's, it's that next step of picking up more active projects and things that you keep up are, that, that, is, that need to be done and are next. Absolutely. Um, so we've gone a little uh, over the hour. Uh, sorry, there's a question for Sandra there. So um, uh, it's great to see the work uh, that the US RSC community are doing in the area of, area of diversity inclusion. Uh, what do you see as the main challenges in the longer term to addressing issues in this area? Do you see things we could do now to help improve the longer term opportunities? I, I think in the longer term, it, it's really part of a cultural change because, it, of course, it's part of culture. I mean, inclusion, diversity, equity is not just that we have in STEM, like, you know, more men than women. It, it, it's, it, in all the different engineering, I, I would say positions that it's still a kind of more, oh, that is a job for a man. You know, it, it, it's, so I, I think cultural change is really the challenge. Even so we have many positive examples already and being a woman in STEM, I sometimes have to smile when people ask me, Sandra, what can, can we do? And not, I, I'm like, you know, I'm probably the wrong person to ask because we should ask the students who are jumping off in that moment, but they're interested in STEM and somehow not continuing. What, what puts them off? And not all of these students might be a problem with equity or inclusion, but some probably are. And you need to catch them bef before they jump off, I, I think is, is a goal. And that needs to find out what, what is the reason or when does it hit them? to jump off. So obviously nobody got me to jump off, but um, I might be also one of the examples. I'm not so easy to scare. So maybe that's, that's it. Um, and the other, yeah, to have to improve the longer term opportunities. I think every step we can do now, like really showing, and even as we mentioned, the more passive steps like mentioning code of conduct on websites showing that we are aware of the topic, but I think we really need more initiatives, like reaching out to several networks, ha having the information, because it has to do also with education. And I don't, myself, don't have enough knowledge yet about the topic to say, oh, I'm an expert now, I, I can help you with that topic. No, I have to find out what are the right things to do. And I would love to see that in networking group.
And that would improve the longer term of patronities, I hope. 